y'all, Dixie here. Today I want to talk about the Lanshan UL one person tent and compare that to the Z Pack Soulplex. And then I want to discuss why is Z Pack so expensive and why it may or may not be worth it. There has been some buzz for a while now about these lightweight Lanshan tents that are made in China and seem to resemble some ultralight tents like the z -Pax tents, including the one-person and the two-person tents. I decided to order the one-person... Oh, I'm gonna have to put on some sunglasses, y'all. Huh. Anyway, I decided to order the one-person tent and compare it to a z -Pax one-person tent. And my friend Aaron, who is also the editor of this channel, has the Z-Pack Soulplex that he used on his CDT through hike last year. Now the Soulplex has recently been replaced by the Z-Pack's Plexamid, but for all intents and purposes, having the Z-Pack's one person and the Lanshan one person should give us a pretty good comparison. So they're both one person tents, but the Lanshan is a double wall tent. This means that there is a mesh body to the tent that has a rain fly that actually connects to and goes over top of that mesh body. Double wall tents are nice for ventilation. They typically have less condensation issues than a single wall tent. Also, you can remove the rain fly and look at the stars. At first, I wasn't quite sure how that would be possible in the Lanshan tent, but if you set the trekking pole up upside down and then add an additional guy line, I believe I got an extra one with the tent. So then you could just hook it to the top of the trekking pole and stake it out. Another option, if you didn't want to fool with that or have the weight of additional guy line, you can always unhook the fly from the mesh of the tent and just kind of wrap it around the tent. That way, at least one half is open and you can look at the stars and have added ventilation on warmer nights, of course, when it's not raining. In contrast, the Z-Pack Soulplex is a single wall tent. And as I previously mentioned, they do typically have more condensation, but the Soulplex is designed with this in mind. There is a mesh border around the bathtub floor so that way the condensation collects on the walls and then rolls off through the mesh. Because the tent's designed this way, condensation usually isn't an issue, but there is a problem of not being able to remove the rain fly because there isn't a separate rain fly, so you won't be able to do the same type of stargazing or have quite the same ventilation on a warm night as you would in a double wall tent. Now let's talk about setup. For the Lanshan one person, you need one trekking pole and at least six tent stakes. For the Z-Pack Soulplex, you'll need two trekking poles and at least six stakes. Now for the Z-Pack's Plexamid, you'll only need one trekking pole. Again, that one might be a little bit closer to the Lanshan one person. As far as ease of setup goes, when I pulled the Lanshan one person out of the package, there were no directions. And if there were directions, they weren't in English. I don't know how to read Chinese. So there is a potential that something was included there. I just couldn't read it. It took a little bit of time to figure out. I would say that if I hadn't set up a tent that requires a trekking pole for setup before, I might have struggled with it a little bit more. I think that out of the box, the Z-Pack Soulplex is probably a little bit more intuitive, but I've set up a Z-Pax tent so often, I personally have the duplex that maybe that just comes a little easier because I'm kind of familiar with that brand already. But after about the third time of setting up the Lanshan one person, I felt like I pretty much had it whooped. The most difficult part to me was staking out the area where the trekking pole is holding the tent up. I don't know what it is about that adjustment there, but I really just couldn't figure it out. There's probably a video out there that has a real easy solution for that, but I ended up just tying a knot and making it work the best I could. It functions fine. I didn't have any issues once I did that. So, and I may not understand how the locks work on that particular guy line, but that's the biggest issue I had in learning to set the tent up. I also thought it was interesting that you could tighten the mesh fly part of the tent all of the double wall tents I have, you just stake through a loop on the tent directly. So I've never had one that you adjust that mesh area to, but I could see that there could be some versatility with that. I could, however, see where those little stretchy adjusters that are on the body of the tent could wear out over time and potentially be a pain. And finally, in regards to setup, if I was gonna take the Lanshan tent on a backpacking or camping trip, I would wanna take a ground cloth in my backyard because I could run inside if there was a problem I didn't. 
but I just feel like that nylon floor is a little thin and I would feel better if it was protected with some sort of ground cloth. The Z-Pax tent, however, has a pretty durable bathtub floor and Z-Pax says that a ground cloth is not required with their tents. Z-Pax tents do come with instructions for how to set up their tents, but I suppose that if somebody in China ordered a tent from Z-Pax and the instructions arrived in English, they probably wouldn't understand them either. The Lanshan tent itself is said online to be 28.4 ounces. I measured it at the house and my scale showed 28.7, kind of splitting hairs, but it's between that 28 ounce and 29 ounce range. The Z-Pack Solplex is 14 and a half ounces and for both of these weights, that includes the stuff sack that they come in. The Lanshan tent is 82 and a half inches long, 29 and a half inches wide, and it goes up to a height of 47 inches. The Solplex is 90 by 30 by 48 inches. Looking at those dimensions, it doesn't really seem like there should be much of a difference that you can feel, but I did feel a little bit more cramped up in the Lanshan one than I did when I was in the Z-Pack Solplex. That could be because of the way they look inside. It could be an optical illusion. It could be a lot of things, but that's just the way I felt when I was in both of them. The vestibule, however, does appear to be slightly bigger on the Lanshan tent than on the Z-Pack Solplex. As far as the little bells and whistles, there are pockets in each of these tents that you can store contents inside. And both of them have one door that opens up on the long side of the tent, or what I would consider the front of it, which is the long side. On the Lanshan tent, I don't love how the door is only on about half of that side of the tent, so it doesn't open the full side of the tent like the Solplex does, but maybe that's to save weight with the zipper. Um, either way, it's not that big of a deal. However, on the Solplex, I just really do like how the door opens up the whole side of the tent. Now let's talk about rain performance because of course I couldn't just set up this Lanshan tent, crawl inside of it and really make a judgment on it. I had to test it out in the rain. So last night it rained and I decided to go out there and set up camp for the night. I woke up several times during the night, one because I had an owl visitor and the second time because just the drumming of the rain on the tent. Uh, I woke up and got real excited to see if it was leaking or anything. And all throughout the night, I stayed completely dry. I was a bit concerned because I had read some of the reviews online that said that people had to seam seal where the guy lines connect to the wall of the rain fly. Not the area where you stake it down in the corners, but the actual wall where you would kind of stake it out to make more room inside, or if it was real windy, just to have extra anchors. Some folks reported that those parts were leaking, and some said just for good measure, they decided to seam seal those areas because they're actually sewn into the fly. I didn't seam seal anything, so I was just waking up just to make sure that I wasn't getting completely soaked, but all was well. Now, it was not like an outrageous downpour with high winds last night or anything like that. So if I was to take this tent on a backpacking trip, I definitely would seam seal those areas before I go. As far as condensation goes, I invited my dog son, Hank, to spend the night with me in the tent. That way I had somebody else breathing in there, trying to make it warm and, and create more condensation because I really wanted to give it a good test. I would not recommend having the one person if you were gonna take a dog with you on trail. It definitely worked, but my legs had to be pushed up against the wall of the tent, and that's never really a good idea when it's raining because even though I noticed most of the condensation in the Lanshan was on the rain fly part and running down to the ground, of course that net material was still a little bit damp, so I found that my sleeping bag was just a tiny bit damp, but it was nothing like if I had been against the wall of a single wall tent when it had all of that condensation on it. Especially if in the Solplex I was to push up against that bathtub floor, then the condensation from the wall of the tent would run down onto my bag and definitely get it more wet than I ended up being in the Lanshan tent. z tents come already seam sealed and waterproof, so you don't have to worry about adding anything additional with those tents. And finally, what everybody wants to know, well, what is the price difference in these two tents? The Lanshan tent ran me about $114. I've seen it on places like AliExpress for about $80 on sale. It really just depends where you get it and who's running what sale. The Z-Pack Solplex costs Aaron $549. And this is where all of the jaws drop open and everyone's like, oh my gosh, 
$550, why would anyone ever pay that for a tent, especially something that looks so cheaply made? Some people would quickly argue that having a tent that weighs 14 ounces less is not worth spending $440 more. One thing to consider is the materials used to make each tent. The Lanshan one-person tent is made out of sil nylon. It's actually 15 denier on top and then 20 denier on bottom. Just by quick Google search, sil nylon runs about $11 per yard. Nylon is also known to stretch and can sag, especially when it's raining. It also tends to hold water, so if you pack up your wet tent, then the next day when you're hiking, or especially if it's still raining while you're packing up, you're probably gonna be carrying more water weight than you know just inside the walls and in the stuff sack of that tent. Now, that definitely doesn't mean that the Lanshan tent is just you know, crappily made and just made out of real cheap, bad materials or anything like that. It's just that the Z-Pack Solplex is made out of a higher quality material called Dyneema Composite Fabric, which runs about $32 per yard. That's what I found in another quick Google search. You might recognize it by its previous name, Cuban Fiber. So you might be wondering, well, why would Z-Packs bother making these tents out of a much more expensive material? First of all, it's the strongest fabric known to man and is one of the strongest materials known to man. It's stronger than diamond, two times stronger than Kevlar, and 15 times stronger than steel. Dyneema has a very high strength to weight ratio and it handles wind very well and won't rip easily. Dyneema doesn't absorb a significant amount of water, so you're not gonna have a whole lot of added water weight like you would with a nylon tent. And finally, it doesn't stretch, so you're not gonna have a saggy tent when you wake up. It should be just as taut as when you first set it up. When considering the price difference between these two tents, you also have to think about where they were made. So the Lanshan tent, as I previously mentioned, is made in China. And because their laws are a little bit different, they're probably able to afford to make things at a cheaper price. The Z-Pack Solplex is made by a cottage company here in the US, actually in Florida. So again, those things have to be considered. And if you look at other cottage companies here in the US, like Hyperlite Mountain Gear, for example, their shelters are either similarly priced or they're even more expensive. Let me make it clear though, before I go any further, that I am in no way pushing these expensive tents on anybody. I'm not saying that if you don't have a $600 tent, you're gonna be miserable and unsuccessful in the world of backpacking. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just exploring why these tents could be priced differently and why some people may find more value in the Z-Pax tents compared to the Lanshan tents to make that price difference worth it to them. So if you're sitting there and you're trying to decide, well, is the $440 difference between the Lanshan one and the Solplex personally worth it to me? I think the biggest deciding factor on this is what are you using this tent for? Are you taking it out for weekend trips? Are you taking it on a through hack? Let's just crunch some numbers for a minute and say that you're gonna take whichever tent you buy on a through hack. If you say that you're gonna take it on the Appalachian Trail and you're estimating it'll take you about six months and you're gonna take 30 zeros, so you might have five months of actually sleeping in the tent at night, so about 150 days that you'll spend in the tent. Well, then the Lanshan tent will cost you about 76 cents per night in that tent. The Z-Pack Solplex will cost you about $3.66 per night to use that tent. And this is, of course, assuming that the life of the tent is over after that. So it might be a no-brainer for you, and you might think, well, if I can spend 76 cents per night rather than 366 per night, why wouldn't I do that? Regardless of how strong you are, it's basically impossible for a person to carry more weight farther in a day than they can carry less weight. So if you're carrying less weight every day over a five to six month period, you're gonna have a lot more time and or energy to spend however you want because you won't be as tired going the same distance and therefore there will be less wear and tear on your body too. 366 per night still is pretty cheap, especially if you're not paying rent somewhere. But of course, the Lanshan tent is a much cheaper option. Now let's do a little bit of a different comparison here just to look at it at a different angle. Say a through hacker gets the Solplex tent, but let's say that that through hacker only spends the night in that tent those 150 days during their through hike in that year period. Now let's look at a weekend hiker who decides to get the Lanshan tent. They have to spend 31 nights in that tent in that year period to get the same rate of 366 per night in their tent. So both hikers are paying 
the same amount of money per night again if the weekend hiker goes at least 31 days. This is just an example where both people are actually paying the same price to stay in each tent per night but they're just used differently. And finally, different people have different priorities and lifestyle choices. Aaron made a funny point about this in particular when we were talking about this video and these two tents because he paid $550 for his tent to go backpacking on the CDT. He paid $600 for the truck that he drives. It is more common for through hikers to collect memories and experiences more so than fancy items and things, except for when it comes to backpacking gear. Because if you're using something every single day that makes your life more convenient, then you do want the most valuable thing to you, depending on what you're looking for in your backpacking gear. And I mentioned before that I know that the 14 ounces in weight savings is probably not worth $440 to most people who are getting out there and backpacking. But to the more mature people in the backpacking world, folks who potentially are 60, 70, even in their 80s, having a lightweight pack and lightweight gear might be the difference in getting to go backpacking or not go backpacking anymore. The fact that technology has improved and that they can have more lightweight gear might mean that they're able to get out there again when before they thought that backpacking wouldn't be an option for them anymore. And even for younger people, if you're gonna be backpacking a lot, like through hiking each year, and you've got that little bit of added weight on you, you could wear your joints and your body out a lot faster than if you go with something more lightweight. I know for myself, even if I chug a half a liter of water, I can tell a difference in my pack just from the weight of that one pound. So it's all about what's valuable to the individual and that's not necessarily what's reflected on the price tag. So all in all, do I think that the Lanshan one person tent is a good lightweight option for the world of backpacking? Absolutely, I think that it's got good ventilation and if you make sure to seam seal those areas I talked about earlier, I think that this tent will probably keep you dry. I also think that this is a pretty cheap option compared to kind of midway tents like the Big Agnes Fly Creek UL1. I think those run about $300 and weigh about 26 ounces. Now those are set up with separate tent poles, but you know, just considering a one person tent that's not made out of Cuban fiber, then you know that's something that you could compare it to. And with that, you'd be saving almost $200 for just an additional two ounces, well, two to three ounces of weight. But I do certainly think that there is value in a Dyneema tent and that it's not just cut and dry, you know, oh, for sure the Lanshan is the no brainer option. Again, it really just depends on the application that you're gonna use this tent for. Are you gonna be weekend hiking or through hiking? Are you looking to upgrade your backpacking gear to something more lightweight so you can reduce your base weight? Or are you just getting started into things and you want something that's quality but also doesn't break the bank? It just really boils down to your individual preferences and where you're at in your backpacking journey. All right, y'all, well, that is all I have for you today on the Lanshan UL one person tent versus the Z-Pack Soulplex. I would love to hear y'all's thoughts and or questions in the comments below. And if any of y'all have been using the Lanshan one or the Lanshan two person for any extended amount of time, I would love to hear your thoughts about it also. Uh, I would really like if somebody would go on a through hike with one of these tents and let me know how it holds up. And if you're somebody who has used one of the Z-Pax tents and the Lanshan tents, I would also like to hear your thoughts in comparing the two. So that sounds like a lot of homework for y'all. But anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe before you go and we will see y'all next time.